move on to our next speaker, and that is uh, Tim Doucette. He'll talk to us about Celestron's Star Science Explorer telescope and software. Go ahead, Tim. Hey, everyone. Thanks, Thanks very much, much for uh, inviting me. My, my name is Tim Doucette, and uh, I come, come from you from, from Quinn, Nova, Nova Scotia, Scotia, about 30 minutes out of Yarmouth. So oh, today I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things, actually. Um, I'll give you a quick introduction about myself, uh, where I am, the importance of our area, and uh, we'll talk about the Celestron Star Sense Explorer telescopes, and uh, hopefully give you guys a good understanding of how they work and uh, and how things, uh, and, and uh, if it's something that's right for you. So let's get to it. So, I am the owner operator of the Deep Sky Observatory out in just half an hour out of Yarmouth County, Nova Scotia. And I started in 2016 building a, an observatory, a family run business. Um, we started as an astro tourism kind of destination area. Um, sometimes it's cloudy, of course. We still have things that happen here. Um, in 2018, we ended up um, creating the sky bubble experiences. Um, we created a cabin for rent and with nice skylights. Uh, most popular right now is the sky bubble tents, which are basically uh, outdoor, uh, outdoor bubble tents. Um, we have a beautiful lake for kayaking, or I should say a river for kayaking, and uh, fire pits. You know, it's nice uh, to, you know, fish and uh, enjoy just the night sky and the campfires and the whole camping experience. So this has become sort of a big glamping experience. Um, we've hosted star parties and have about 1,500 people a year that attend the observatory experience and stay overnight. Um, these tents are really nice because they keep you out of the elements at the same time, give you a beautiful night sky view uh, all night. And uh, that, what happens if it's cloudy? Well, you better hope there's a thunderstorm be because that's a real experience too. So our region here uh, in Southwest Nova Scotia is is quite a special one. Um, let's see if we can advance to the next slide. slide. So, so our area, area like, like in, in our, our community, community um, we've, we've basically, basically in, in 2014, 2014 our area was being looked at by a group called the Starlight Foundation um, as an area for astrotourism experiences and also astronomy, you know, outreach, education, the whole bit. Um, so in this time, you know, we've created this uh, this experience. One of the thing the things that's really uh, on our list of priorities is to help protect the night sky, um, which is one, one of the things our uh, designation is gives us basically that's one of the mandates for us um, as you can see this area here we're, we've been the first and currently only starlight tourist destination and reserve in North America uh, since 2014 uh, working with auditors uh, it was deemed that this was a really viable area uh, being part of a UNESCO biosphere helped that as well um, so we're working very hard to keep our skies dark and uh, we're currently, where I am here, we're in Bortle 2, um, one and a half to two. And most of the central part of Nova Scotia is in Bortle 1. So we've been trying very hard. We have, uh, our municipality of Argyle now has regulations protecting our night sky. Uh, we've been working with them and there's actually additional regulations that are coming on um, as nuisance bylaws and such. So it's uh, pretty exciting. And Deep Sky Eye is not the only experience. There's other, uh, experiences that you can uh, you can come to Nova Scotia in our neck of the woods and enjoy like a an outdoor night hike uh, we have trails uh, we're actually working on a trail right now as a planet walk trail for about 1.2 kilometers that leads to the ocean uh, with an incredible view of the Milky Way looking south so anyways that's my introduction so if you're looking for something fun to do this summer come for a visit so the product that I'd like to talk to you about today 
is the Celestron StarSense Explorer telescopes. Um, so this is a group of telescopes that Celestron um, started in 2018. Uh, it's a lineup of telescopes and really meant for the beginner to intermediate level. The one we're going to be talking about today is actually the cheapest one on the list. Retails for about $250 or so. It's the StarSense Explorer 80AZ smartphone app enabled telescope as they describe it. Now, just looking at the spec sheet from what's on the website, um, you know, it's an 80 millimeter two aperture. It's not uh, terribly huge, 3.1. Um, it's F11. It comes with a bunch of stuff. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, useful magnification realistically with what they give you uh, is really about, you know, 30, 36 times, really. Um, if you've got a better tripod, you'll end up with sort of the, the 90, mag 90 uh, times magnification. So what makes this type of telescope so special? Um, it's not, there's no motors on these telescopes. Essentially what it does is it pairs with your cell phone. So you mount your cell phone on top of it, and I'll show you that in a bit. But the requirements for your phone are, are fairly specific. The newer the phone you have, the better experience you're going to end up with. It says it works with iPhone 6 and above. I haven't actually tested it. Um, but what your phone really needs is three basic things. You need to have a good camera on the phone. You need to have the gyroscope and the accelerometer. And the more accurate those are as the technology has improved, the better it is. It uses a technology, what we call plate solving. Essentially, it takes a picture with your phone of the sky, figures out where all the stars are, and shows it to you on a phone, on your phone, so that you can move your telescope around using the, using the uh, tripod adjustments. And I'll show you a, a demonstration of that as well. So what comes in the box with this? Well, there's a bunch of stuff. Of course, you get the telescope, the manual. Um, you get, the one thing that kind of discouraged me a little bit was the, it comes with an erect, uh, image diagonal, which is not that good for, not as good for uh, stargazing. I think they could have maybe just kind of skipped that and just, you know, given you a, a regular diagonal would have given you a little bit more light gathering power, but. I guess some people would want to use it in the daytime. Um, and part I think that as well is the alignment process requires you to look at something. Uh, uh, it can be in the daytime. And I think for simplicity, I think that's why they did that. Comes with a two times Barlow 20 and a 10 millimeter eyepiece star pointer. So basically some of the standard stuff. It comes with two access codes for two pieces of software. You need to activate the app. Uh, there's a StarSense Explorer app that you can download. And um, it also comes with Starry Night Basic Edition. Um, I have Starry Night Pro, and uh, I, I enjoy it quite a bit for my computer. So this is kind of what the telescope is uh, looks like set up. Um, it has a attachment for your phone at the top. and uh, Got it set up with the diagonal and everything, and the tripod and the accessory tray. It's pretty cold. You can see my breath that night um, when I set it up to, to test it out over the over the holidays. And my sort of main reason for buying this telescope, I had sort of twofold um, reason for buying it. The first one was because I was actually going to give one away, uh, which I gave one away as a door prize for uh, a mini star party, an online star party we had over Christmas. So, and the other one was, uh, which I'll get to in a little bit later, is setting it up for my own use, not using this telescope. So here's the uh, the setup. It has a little mirror, has a little uh, bracket attachment, and. Um, So here I am setting it up. Um, you just slide your phone inside. And it works good even with larger phones. Like I've got the Galaxy Ultra 21, 21 Ultra, and it works quite well. Basically, what you do is the, it goes through a two-step alignment. You basically, it takes a picture of 
what's in front of the telescope. And uh, here I am zooming in to my parents' house who live, they live next door. So it's not, not my neighbors, so just my parents. And you look through the eyepiece and you basically have to just align those two. It's, it's easier to look through the eyepiece first and you know, look at say even a star or a land object and then adjust the, adjust the uh, pointer on the software as more as accurately as you can. Then the software instructs you just to point it at the sky. Um, there you can see, probably you might be able to see Orion. Uh, I was pointing it up at Orion just to give it a test. It takes a snapshot, it plate solves it right on your phone. You don't need to have the internet at all to, to work with this app, which is incredible. Um, it plate solves within a few seconds, uh, at least on this phone, it's, it's quite zippy. And then once it's done that, it knows where it is in space. So then you can say, oh, I want to have a look at something. So the first object I just picked um, as demonstration uh, was uh, Sirius. There's quite a large catalog of objects that you can look at, um, which is really cool. I would have killed to have this when I was, uh, when I was younger uh, as a Christmas gift, that's for sure. So I picked, um, I picked Sirius to have a look. Uh, so it tells you just to adjust the telescope and move towards the target. So I'm just moving it by hand uh, the, with the alt azimuth uh, knobs. And when you get close to it, it just tells you to leave the telescope alone and it does another plate solving and it gets you that extra bit even closer. Once the target is aligned, you can then look through the eyepiece and see what you have. So this was pretty cool because it was really my first kind of test at it. Uh, but uh, looking at the eyepiece, you can see that bright blob in the bottom of the, of the eyepiece and that's serious. Uh, so I was pretty impressed right away from the get-go. And uh, I did another search uh, just, you know, for the Orion Nebula. I mean, I know roughly where it is anyway, but uh, just to test it out, I, uh, I got to the Orion Nebula and uh, plate solved again, and away we went. And uh, looked in the eyepiece again, and you can kind of see a a little bit of a blur. It was a bit of a hard challenge just to hold the uh, the phone there, but you can kind of see Orion is actually there, the trapezium. So that was using just the 20 millimeter eyepiece too. So as far as quality of the optics, um, it's is what you'd expect. Um, here's a picture. They're they're coated optics, uh, not using like I don't think they're using like the star bright coatings, the newer stuff, but uh, they're still quite you know, fully multi-coated, you can see the color difference. And I took a picture of the moon as well. Now, to be fair, this is not a fair picture because um, I was actually taking a picture through a double pane glass window that was pretty dirty. <laughs> so um, it does you know, sort of a much better job, but you can see some chromatic aberration or, or the purple around the, around the moon and stuff, uh, regardless of that. It can make, uh, you know, significant, you know, you can get some fairly decent shots, I think, with this, with this scope. Anybody that would be interested in, you know, really using these scopes for, um, you know, some more serious observing, I would go with the higher apertures. Uh, there's 130 millimeters, and I would also go with the reflector telescope as well. And the reason I didn't is because I wanted this to be an absolute beginner, you know, kind of telescope and not have to worry about collimating a reflector. Uh, scope. So as I mentioned, the other thing I was looking at doing is mounting it on my 16-inch Dobsonian telescope. Uh, not so much for me as much, but my plan for this summer, uh, since I just got this scope in the fall, and I got it quite cheaply, so um, I was pretty excited. What I'm planning to do with it is, uh, is attach the StarSense Explorer uh, package onto the telescope so that when other people use this telescope, they'll be able to find things a little bit easier in the night sky. Um, in general, I have an assistant that helps out in the summertime experience. And uh, as part of the experience, the Stopsonian will be used this time. I bought a tracking platform from uh, Crossbow Platforms in California, a really great company to work with and a uh, gentleman that owns it. Uh, he. Uh, he, he put me on the list a little bit higher on the list because he knew what I was doing out here for stargazing and, and 
tourism and outreach. So um, I got my platform last week and I'll show you another picture actually uh, of, of the whole setup. So when I took this gadget apart a little bit, I was trying to think about how I could modify it so that I could, um, you know, put it on my, you know, on my scope. It comes apart quite nicely with different, uh, you know, just unscrews. It's it's very simple, you know, piece of equipment, um, and uh, quite well, you know, it's very bulky. It's very, uh, you know, it's it weighs a good bit. Um, it's got the sort of the next you've heard of the next YZ uh, camera adapter. Well, that's basically what they're using here. Um, you know, easy to make adjustments. This little gadget here, which looks like the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars, um, that's the piece I wanted to replicate uh, because that was what fits on the scope and the uh, camera adapter bolts onto that. So that's what I started uh, tinkering a little bit. Um, I do a little bit of 3D modeling. And so what I did was uh, I basically took a picture of it, brought it into Photoshop, and uh, extruded it into 3D. Now I know Photoshop is, they're sort of getting rid of some of these uh, features, but uh, then I just saved it and brought it into a program called Tinkercad. It's a free CAD software that you can use and um, it's very simple to use. It's very basic. You're not gonna get high precision stuff. Um, but I was able to, to build a 3D model and uh, make it exactly what the, you know, what it what it looked like in real life. As you can see, there's, uh, you know, very simple options to subtract. So I see that this is a big circle there. Well, that's how I made the arc. I measured my uh, tube diameter, which is about 19.25 inches, uh, you know, which is the, the diameter of the, uh, of the secondary holder, um, and then just put all the, the holes for the screws, and uh, I got the perfect arc that fits right along the tube. I don't have to, you know, worry about building stuff that uh, like made out of. I'm not very good with wood. I'm good with graphics and uh, and uh, 3D printing. Um, I plan once I'm finished with this, I'm actually planning to put this model on Thingiverse, uh, which is a company or, or a, a place where you can go and do 3D modeling. Uh, upload your models. Um, you can sell them if you want, or you can just, you know, let people, um, you know, let give give them away if you want, which is most likely what I'll do. Um, I uploaded a model that I did for um, an eyepiece projection sleeve uh, to protect people's eyes from COVID. Um, you'll be able to find that online as well. So yeah, and then uh, I just started doing the 3D print of it. Um, I have a 3D printer at home and. Uh, this is still a work in progress, so it's not completely done yet. Um, but uh, when I'm finished, um, like I say, I'll be mounting this onto my onto my telescope. Um, I did a quick test before I did all this. Basically, strapped it with some duct tape onto the optical tube, and uh, and tried it out. And the StarSense performed just as well. So we created a. a an accessibility ramp um, at the observatory so we can wheel out these telescopes uh, onto the main outdoor observing platform. And my son, um, so here I have my little scope buggy and my son was kind enough to uh, build another building. So um, this was kind of the next best solution. Uh, and that way it also makes the observatory accessible to people in wheelchairs that want to come in and, and look at what we have inside there. So how well does it work? Well, I will certainly be uh, letting you, letting everybody know how well it works. I mean, I've done it, uh, I've been testing it out and uh, you know, without all the 3D stuff and it works really good. So I'm pretty impressed actually. Um, the the gentleman that won the telescope, um, he also was a very amateur, and uh, he's, as far as I know, he's doing well. So that's really good. So just uh, that's kind of my little review of the of the Star Telescope and uh, its things there. Um, 
its associates, if you will. So I'll just show you a couple of uh, photographs that you know we've that I use uh, that I take in the observatory. I have a C14 edge with a hyperstar, um, and I also do time lapse photography as well. So um, yeah, any questions? Uh, you're welcome to fire them along, um, and I'll do my best to answer them. Tim, that's uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, your your uh, your site, uh, your setup is amazing, and and of course uh, this little gadget is very neat. I I just heard of the Star Sense, but never really yeah, knew. Or... We're very lucky. Occasionally, we do actually get to see the Northern Lights. Okay. Um, Thank you again. Sorry, am I going through? And if you have any questions, feel free to email me, Tim at DeepSkyEye.com, and uh, we'll be happy to help you out. Uh, we'd like to find out uh, from Emma if there are any questions for Tim. Yes, we have a few questions. Uh, the first one comes in from Eric Briggs. Do you have to take special steps to stop your phone screen from sleeping out on you? That was a problem I had with my Sky Safari app connecting to my Sky Portal. I did not have an, I did not have that issue. Um, I think it overrides the control for the phone. Uh, for the camera that it's taking pictures. Um, once you've got the telescope and the camera aligned, the camera sort of disappears and your phone stays. Uh, what's really nice too um, is once you've got it lined up, you can turn your phone off if you want and you can move around the sky uh, and you can turn your phone back on and just run the app and you're already lined up so you don't have to uh, do the alignment process again. And uh, it just does its own, takes a picture, plate solves, shows you where to go, and then you're off to the races. Now you can pick up the telescope, you can bring it in another location. There's no pointing north, no level, no no anything like that. Great. That helps. Um, the next question comes in from Arnold Brody. Awesome plate solving. Does the app have a night or red setting? Yes, it does. Absolutely. Uh, I left it off just for visual. Um, you know, taking the video and showing people how it worked. Cool. Um, next question comes in from Andy Beaton. How solid is the StarSense mount? The StarSense mount that I had um, is not very solid. It could have been improved, and it can be actually improved a little bit um, by adding braces at the bottom of the legs. Um, but it's not terrible. For the size of scope, I definitely wouldn't put anything heavier on it. And not, not that it, you really want to, but the newer models, uh, the heavier scopes have better mounts. Hopefully that'll uh, help. You can also check out, um, there's a couple of spots online as well that you can check um, people's reviews as well of the more, um, of the bigger scopes, if you will. Great. Um, this is the last question. It comes in from Paul Markov. Does Celestron sell the bracket or the software only? No, unfortunately, they don't. Um, that's the one thing that's uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of a pain right now. It's possible that they may do something in the future, um, but I, I I can't imagine them doing it right yet. I think it's meant sort of as a marketing thing. It could be just a guess. Um, one thing that you can do though right now, which probably is not going to happen too much in the future, but the software requires a license key to use it. Uh, and it only comes with, uh, on, on the card that comes with the telescope. But what I've actually been able to do is activate the software on two different phones. Um, so I'm not sure if that's something just out of a, something they've missed on, but uh, that's a little hint that if you do have uh, if you do buy one of these and you have two phones you need to use for whatever reason, um, you can uh, install the software on both phones. Thank you. Um, that's all the questions for today. Okay. Thank you. Great. Uh, thanks again, Tim. That was uh, very good. Very interesting.